Together with our brethren in the mainline SDA Church, the members of the SDA Reform Movement are waiting for the soon coming of the Lord. But we do have some differences of doctrine, and one that we'll highlight here is closed communion. In the SDA Reform Movement, we practice what is known as closed communion. That is, the communion, sometimes referred to as the Holy Supper, consisting of the emblems of the body and blood of Christ, are distributed only to the baptized members of the Church. In contrast, the SDA Church practices what is referred to as open communion, meaning the emblems are distributed to anyone who desires them, even if they're not baptized members of the Church. It would seem that open communion available to all is the more inclusive and progressive way for the Church to organize this special service. But one needs to remember that closed communion was the regular practice of the Adventist Church until the second half of the last century. Why do Reformers then insist on closed communion? Well, one must remember that there are two institutions linked together here, baptism and communion. One is without the Church and the other is within the Church. Baptism is freely offered to all and is the New Testament replacement for circumcision. The communion service was instituted as a memorial of the sacrifice of Christ, previously foreshadowed by the Passover. The description of the Passover and the rules governing it can be found in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. In Matthew 26, we find the record of the first communion service given by Christ to his disciples. They'd assembled to celebrate the Passover. After washing their feet, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The Apostle Paul makes the link between the two services in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. This service is not to be entered into lightly. The next two verses continue. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So, what should be offered to a person who is not a member of the body when they want to participate in the communion service? Are we to be exclusive? No. We want everyone to participate in this wonderful commemoration of the sacrifice of Christ on our behalf. We can once again here be guided by the principles of the Passover to answer this question. Could a stranger participate in the Passover? Yes. Let's see how. In Exodus chapter 12 and verse 48, it tells us that when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover of the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. No exclusivity here. Every stranger could be circumcised and then participate in the Passover service. Likewise, to all is given the invitation to be baptized and participate in the communion service. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? 
the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. This was the position of Adventism until fairly recently. We offer the gift of baptism to all, so that in becoming part of the church, the body of Christ, they can experience the blessing of communion. As the Ethiopian realized in speaking with Philip in Acts chapter 8, nothing hinders you from being baptized. The Lord has made every provision for your salvation. Accept His baptism and His sacrifice in your life today.